Collision detection says fire an event whenever two objects touch. We typically use collision detection to react to events within a game, such as when a character gets hit. However, game assets are typically composed from different shapes and sizes. To determine when two objects touch, we must use different equations based on whether the outline of our object's shapes are circular, square, or something else. I covered how to code circular collision detection in another video, which you can check out here. So now, let's cover how to code collision detection with rectangles. To code rectangular collision detection, well, first we need, well, two rectangles. Each rectangle has an associated XY position along with a width and height. First, we must determine whether or not these two rectangles overlap on the X axis. If the right side of rectangle A is greater than or equal to the X position of rectangle B, we can start to say, these two rectangles do indeed overlap. However, if the X position of rectangle A is greater than the right side of rectangle B, the two are no longer overlapping. Therefore, we can write another conditional that says if the X position of A is less than or equal to the X position of B plus its width, then the two are colliding. So if the left side of A is less than the right side of B, they are overlapping. And that's all we need for collision detection on the X axis, but what about the Y axis? To detect collision on the y-axis, we essentially do the same thing, but using y-coordinates and our box's heights. So if the bottom side of rectangle A is greater than the top side of rectangle B, the two are overlapping, but we also need that additional conditional that says these two can only be overlapping if the top side of rectangle A is less than the bottom side of rectangle B. So by combining these x and y collision detection formulas together, with a bunch of JavaScript AND statements, we have officially coded rectangular collision detection. Now let's do a quick screencast to really hammer in the point and show how this is possible with two HTML canvas rectangles. All right, so let's go ahead and code collision detection using HTML canvas. Here we have a basic canvas setup. We are tracking our mouse movement and we are running an animation loop so that whenever we move our mouse, the rectangle, at least the red rectangle, follows our mouse wherever it goes on the screen. You'll see here, this is the code for a rec red rectangle, and here this is the code for our blue rectangle. So how do we actually activate some sort of event when these two rectangles intersect? Well, we're going to want to use some sort of conditional within our animate loop. So let's go ahead and start off that conditional with an if statement. And now, what do we have to say inside of here? What conditions have to be true in order for these to be intersecting? Well, if we remember that explainer video we just covered, we know the right side of our red rectangle needs to be greater than the left side of our blue rectangle. So how do we get the coordinate for the right side of a red rectangle? We're going to start with collision detection on the x-axis to start, then we'll do the y-axis. So how do we get that right coordinate? Well, if we look at a red rectangle right here, we are filling in a rect with this color at these positions. So we have a mouse x and a mouse y. Mouse x is going to be the left side of a red rectangle. So how do we get the right side? Well, we can take our mouse x and add on the rectangle's width, which is going to be 100. You'll see if I change this to something like 200, and then comment out our if statement so this actually works, that our red rectangle has expanded. So we would need to add 200 onto our mouse X in order to get the right hand side of our red rectangle. We're going to keep this at 100 for now, but at least we know now how to get that right side coordinate. So what we can say is, if the right side of a red rectangle, which remember is going to be our mouse X plus the width of the red rectangle, which is going to be 100, if the right side is greater than the left side of our blue rectangle, greater than or equal to. Well, what is the left side coordinate for our blue rectangle? Well, if we look down below within this fill rect statement, we know the very first argument within fill rect is going to be the x coordinate of this rectangle. So what we can do is copy this code right here, paste it in to our if statement. So this is going to be the blue rectangle x coordinate and this is going to be the red rectangle x coordinate but on the right hand side of the red rectangle. So if we go ahead and console log out that these two are colliding like so, open up our console, give it a refresh, you'll see that it just says it's colliding continuously even though it's not really, but if we go to the left hand side, you'll see that the console log text stops repeating itself. What we just did was add in a conditional that says if the right side is past the left side of the blue rectangle, like so, 
then we're going to activate this console code. But if we go to the left, it stops, right, it continues. But if we keep going to the right, even though these two are not colliding anymore, well, we still get the colliding console log. That's not what we want, but this is where we have to add in that additional conditional. So if we want to add another conditional into our if statement, we can write at, at, and end. And then what is the conditional we want to actually write? Well, now we need to track whether or not the left side of our red rectangle right here is less than the right side of our blue rectangle. So right now you'll see over here is the left side of our red rectangle less than the right side of our blue rectangle. No, it's not, it's greater than. We need to make sure that we only call this code if the left side right here is less than the right side of the blue rectangle. So how would we write that? Well, let's go ahead and grab the left side of our red rectangle, which is going to be our mouse X, we can go ahead and see right here and fill rect. This is our X coordinate. This is going to be the left side of the rectangle. And we want to say only call this collision detection code if this coordinate is less than or equal to what? The right side of our blue rectangle. So the right side of our blue rectangle is going to be the blue rectangle's X coordinate. We're going to grab that. And then we're going to add on its width, which is also 100. That is going to be the right side of the blue rectangle. So now when this refreshes, You'll see we're not colliding, but if the right side is past the left side of the blue, now it is colliding. But if we go further and further off of the right side of the blue, no longer colliding, we just coded collision detection for the X axis using rectangles. Now, one thing, if I go ahead and shrink our console and refresh, you'll see we are still calling this collision code, even though these rectangles technically are overlapping each other. And that is because we only coded this collision detection for the X axis. We also need to code collision detection for the Y axis as well to make sure that this code is only called when these are actually overlapping. So how do we go ahead and do that? Well, it's going to be the same exact thing that we did for the X axis, but using mouse y and also our y coordinates of our actual rectangles. So here we go. We're going to want to add in another conditional and let's go ahead and start from the top. So how do we detect collision on the y axis? Well, we need to get the bottom of our red rectangle and if the bottom of our red rectangle is greater than the top of our blue rectangle, we know that the two are colliding. So how do we get the bottom of our red rectangle? Well, we're going to want to reference our mouse y because if we look where we are creating this rectangle our y coordinate for our rectangle is going to be set to mouse y and that just means it's going to follow the mouse wherever it is on the screen so we have our mouse y which is going to be the top left hand corner of our rectangle but now we need to get the bottom of this rectangle so we're going to add on our rectangle's height and that is going to be 100 as we can see right here so we're going to add on that height and this needs to be greater than or equal to what well our blue rectangles y coordinate. What is that? Our y coordinate is going to be the second argument within fill rect right here. So we can go ahead and copy that, paste it into our conditional, save, and then on refresh, you'll see we are no longer console logging out this text simply because the bottom side of our red rectangle is not greater than the top side of our blue rectangle. But if I begin to go downwards so that it is overlapping, you'll see now we are getting that colliding code console logged out. That is perfect. But if we go further down, you'll see that code is still being called because we need to add one more conditional for these rectangles. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll add in that additional conditional. And now what do we need to say? Well, we need to say only collide if the top side of our red rectangle is less than the bottom side of our blue rectangle. So we can go ahead and grab the top side of our red rectangle, which is just going to be mouse Y. We only want to call this collision detection code if mouse.y is less than what? Well, whatever our blue rectangle's y coordinate is, which is going to be this right here, the second argument, it's going to be this point right here on the blue rectangle, plus its height. What is its height? The height is the fourth argument of the fill rect method. So it's going to be 100. We're going to want to add that on to the canvas height divided by two. So we're going to get the bottom coordinate of our blue rectangle. And now you'll see when I go under the blue rectangle, we're no longer calling this colliding code. I can go all around it, we're no longer calling it, but now, no matter which part of our rectangles touch, you can see I touch them very slightly, we're now calling that colliding code, and this continues to call until these two are no longer overlapping. 
So that is how you're going to code collision detection using rectangles. To clean this code up a bit, you'd want to use object-oriented programming just to make sure that you're not referencing all these random equations where you don't even really know what these represent. You can also declare these as variables to make this a little more understandable because right here, canvas width divided by two, I don't really know what that is, but this is really what? This is really our blue rectangles x. So now that I've declared this variable, I can simply go ahead and replace any instance of this code right here. See, it's used in two places with blue rectangles x. And now we know that that code is supposed to represent our blue rectangles x coordinate. Everything still functions the same. So that's how you're going to clean your code up a little bit is one, you can assign variables to complex equations. So you know what those equations mean. And two, you can take it a step further by using object oriented programming where each of these rectangles would have their own individual properties such as x, y with height, color, and so forth. And then you can insert those into this equation to get the same result. But that is how you're going to code collision detection. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.